This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hello, pet lovers. This is Michelle Fern, host of Best Pets for Pets on Pet Life Radio. I have an amazing woman on my show. She has anything, everything about dogs, and she has such a unique approach to living with dogs, and she's done so many other great things. Do not budge from your seat, from your headphones, wherever you are. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. I love cleaning the litter box, said no one ever. Luckily, there's World's Best Cat Litter, the litter that promises less mess with less litter. Only World's Best Cat Litter uses the concentrated power of corn to quickly trap odors in tight clumps. And quick clumping means you never have to chisel or scrape the box. Less cleanup with less wasted litter? That's a litter bit amazing. Save $2 on World's Best Cat Litter. Visit www.saveonworldsbest.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. I'd like to introduce Jennifer Arnold. She is the co-founder of We For Dogs. She is the founder of Canine Assistance. She has written several books. The latest is called Love Is All You Need. And she has developed some innovative products that are helpful in bonding with our dogs. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. In talking with you briefly before the show, I'm thinking, what haven't you done? Tell us a little bit about yourself so people can get a little bit of the idea of what you're about, what your brand is about. I'd be happy to. Uh, When I was, to make it really brief, when I was 16, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and at that time told I would likely use a wheelchair all of my life. I have since regained the ability to walk, but I became really interested in service dogs. And so in 1991, my mom and I started a service dog school, which is Canine Assistance. We're based just north of Atlanta in Milton, Georgia. So we've been around for about 26 years. And I've always been a dog lover, but I didn't truly understand how magnificent they really are until I saw years and years and years of them giving more to people than we have any right to have expected uh, and doing it with such grace. And and I worried about what we could do for the dogs and were they safe and were they happy? And I began really investigating that. And, and I realized the answer to that is not Totally. You know, in 2014, in the United States alone, we spent a billion dollars in an effort to alleviate stress and anxiety in pet dogs, which is crazy to me. So I realized that maybe maybe we could do things better. And I began looking at all the cognition research that's being done and all we now know about emotionality in dogs and with the help of my sister-in-law, Shannon, we started a company called We for Dogs. And our first product is called the We Leash, which is a, a really neat sort of bond building leash that I'll tell you more about as we go along. But I've driven to give back to dogs. I owe them big time. And that's what I want to do. As you were talking, I was thinking back to the dogs I've had in my life, and you're right. I had a family member pass away. My dog was with me, and I was just, you know, so grateful for that. And that's such a gracious way to put it, though. They give so much to us, more so than we realize. And always with unconditional love, they're just incredible. So you know what I wondered? I wondered, why don't, if what we love about dogs so very much, is the fact that they never make us earn their love. You know, once they love us, they do love us without condition. So why do we put conditions on our affection for them? Why do we make them earn over and over and over and over again? 
our affection. How do you mean that we make them earn? Okay. So I believe that as training became more common after World War II and the idea of, you know, nothing in life is free, that dogs should sit before we give them their food, that we shouldn't let them put their feet up on us, that we should make them sit and behave calmly prior to interacting with them when we come home, et cetera. Even positive reinforcement dog training, which I was a very proud uh, sort of supporter of, I see now as conditional affection to a certain extent. It's, I love you when you do as I tell you. You know, I'm going to reward you with, with food or affection, but only if you make me happy. Does that make any sense? That makes sense, but I understand what you're saying, and I'm thinking, wow, the fact that I'm not so strict with my dogs is probably a good thing, but don't you need some sort of, you know, if the dogs are Absolutely. misbehaving or, you know, jumping on people or... Absolutely. I just think that we need to move from a, you know, dog training as we think about it now with pet dogs, with service dogs, it doesn't matter. It's all sort of a me versus you. You know, it, we're we're almost you not know, in conflict with the dogs, but but we want to, you know, absolutely bend them to our will. And what we miss is that dogs are highly social animals. Every bit as social as our human beings. They want to have relationships with us. We needn't make them, and as a matter of fact, you know, they're incredibly vulnerable because we control everything, their food, their water, their toys, their playtime, their bathroom, their beds, their sleeping schedule, their reproductive schedule, if any, everything, we control everything about them. And rather than making them feel more vulnerable by saying, you know, if you don't make me happy, then I'm not going to give you affection or treats. Perhaps it would behoove us to make them feel more confident, safer, more secure. And within that relationship that is secure, we then have tremendous influence and the ability to say, you know, get your head out of the trash. That's not how we act. The more we find out about dogs, the more we understand that they're very toddler-like in their emotionality and that cognitively they're smarter than toddlers in many ways. They can understand, get your head out of the trash, that's not how we act. We needn't rely on what we thought we had to rely on, which were those one-word commands and cues and those short phrases, thinking them not smart enough to be capable of anything more than operant conditioning. They can actually learn. It's amazing. But they can only do it when they're not afraid. And I think we accidentally make them very afraid. So for someone who's training their dog... Stop immediately. No, go ahead. Okay. Somebody who's working with their dog. So for someone working with their dog, and as you're talking, I'm trying, I'm getting a picture, and I'm thinking of people that, you know, have their dogs and are basically heal this, this, like it must be as if they're in military school. Right. And they're in military school. And yet, and that's what as a society, we have gravitated toward this idea that a good dog is a dog who sits and stays on command. And I just think that we're missing the bigger picture. And number one, that picture is all this sitting and staying seems to be making them unbelievably anxious. And number two, what we really love about our dogs is not, you know, who has ever had a dog pass away only to lament, my goodness, but he did a beautiful long down stay. That's not what we love about dogs. That's not what we value in our dogs. You know, what we really value is the relationship. So let's go back to letting them be our friends. And our friends don't want to disappoint us. So, for example, around here, we've gone from using no or uh-uh or, you know, the absence of reward as 
as a corrective measure of sorts. And now we say things like, quit acting like your father's people and get your head out of the trash. You know, it just mind your manners. That's not how a nice dog acts. And it it seems crazy, but it is it has been the most miraculous transformation for our dogs and for the people who interact with them that you could ever imagine. I mean, we now have dogs to whom you can say, is my blood sugar out of range? And hold out your left hand for yes and your right hand for no. And if they nudge your left hand for yes, you can then say, is it high or low? And they'll tell you. It Once the fear is gone, what the dogs can actually do is stunning. Absolutely stunning. So I just believe with all my heart that rather than starting puppies in obedience when they're eight weeks old, that what we really need to do is start puppies in your safe and secure classes. <laughs> just I uh, love you every bit as much as you love me. You don't have to earn it. I'm never going to leave you. You're absolutely safe because that gives you extraordinary power to say, please don't do that. It doesn't make me happy. Right. We're right at the point where we have to take a break. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back. Right after we kibble a little with our sponsors. Ooh, get the stinky dog away from me. Bad breath and bad gas. PD stopped eating. All his hair fell out. Itching, licking, missing fur. At least $5,000 in vet bill. Creams, antibiotics, sprays. No results. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. If you want the dog to be healthy, you got to feed it something healthy. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Dino Dynavite is nutrition. The shedding is stopped and the itching is stopped. Her coat is not soft, it's silky, it's healthy and shiny and glossy. She's got life, she's got energy. Tons of energy, no more bad smell. Dynavite's the bomb. <gasps> Dynavite is the best thing that's ever happened to my dogs, you know, besides me, of course. <laughs> 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. Dynavite for life. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E oh. dot com. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your cat tree tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back, everyone. Jennifer, that all sounds so amazing. Your latest book is Love is All Your Need that talks. It's I know it's one of several books that talks more about how to live that type of life with your dogs, correct? Correct. Actually, Love is All You Need is my third book with Penguin Random House, but this is the only book uh, that talks about it. I call this the bond-based approach, and, and this third book is, is the only one. So I encourage people, if they're interested, please to find that particular book. To enhance the bond-based approach, you've created a really interesting product. It is the Wee Leash. What is the difference between the Wee Leash and the Standard Leash? Well, the Wee Leash is the first of hopefully many um, products and educational opportunities for Wee for Dogs. But the Wee Leash is, is designed with two handles, one for you to hold and one for your dog to hold. So rather than you walking your dog or you having your dog drag you down the road, you are literally walking one another. 
And have you ever seen a dog walking down the road holding the leash in his mouth? Yes. And that unbelievable pride, even though we've been told and told and told that that's a no-no, you see that dog look really proud, doesn't he? Yep. So my idea was, um, let's make that legit. Let's give him something to hold. So it comes with a handle that has is a crinkly handle, but you can also get one of several toys or little binkies. We have our own little blanket. So there are multiple things that you can get for your dog to hold. And we found that it reduces reactivity because the way the leash is structured, when the dog is holding his handle in his mouth, that branch of the leash is slightly longer than the part that goes to his collar or harness. So he never feels restrained. You know, he never feels like he's trapped by the leash, which is one of the things that I think causes dogs to get upset, you know, when they see other dogs. And I mean, they they feel like we've taken flight away from them. So sometimes they get kind of reactive. So this this leash has not only helped with that uh, feeling of being connected to one another, but also it's reducing reactivity. You also have wee toys. They're very crinkly. Uh, Mr. Z and Nikki had a lot of fun with them. What is the thought behind the crinkly toys? I know dogs like a lot of crinkle type of things. They do. And- they Dogs like crinkles and Frankly, the squeak drives me crazy. (laughs) And I know a lot of dogs who will actually tear up the toy to get the squeaker out. So our idea really was let's give the dog something entertaining. And see, those those toys come, um, you can purchase them separately, but they, they can also be purchased with a hook that you can use to put them on the end of the leash so that dogs can have different choices. Maybe one day he'd like to carry his chicken and the next day maybe his giraffe and while you go on a walk. Now, why is it that they like that crinkly sound? You know, I don't know. I think it's just, uh, it's unique to them and it seems to just keep them engaged, which I think is because I can't quite place it, maybe can't quite understand it. So it just makes them stay interested enough to chew a little bit um, on it or keep moving it in their mouth. Very interesting. Jennifer, you've been amazing. You've told us so much about such an interesting way to think about your dogs and just such a, it's kind of like a 180 approach, I think, as far as from, (laughs) you know, where a lot of people are as to where, and then I've never been a very strict pet parent. So now I feel better about that. <laughs> but Good um, for you. Yeah. But, and your dogs have been wonderful for you, haven't they? Yeah. They, I mean, they may I, have had little naughties, but overall, you've been very happy with each other, haven't you? Oh, yeah. They, it's, and it's so interesting how you can tell they have different personalities. It's just interesting why they do certain things and their personalities. And, you know, Mr. Z is getting older. He'll be 12 soon. And he's just, I still remember when I got him, he's not that different. You know, it's just, it's just interesting. And then Nicky, he's little, he's a Havanese, but he thinks he's a big dog. You know, he's the warden. He barks. (laughs) I don't know how he knows this is wrong, but... If we have the cats, because we bring the animals from the house to the studio, they're my crew, and cats are on the table or something, he'll bark at them. You know, you're wrong. I don't know how he knows this, but he just knows this. You know, so he keeps everybody in line. So I it's love just that. so interesting. Where can people find out more about your amazing approach to dogs and also about your products? Well, I think the best place is probably our website, which is just we, W-E, for F-O-R, dogs.com. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much again for being on Best Bets for Pets. My great privilege. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Mr. Z tried the wee leash. And at first I thought, I don't know if he's in a, you know, that old dog new tricks all except I think you can always teach people to change and dogs to change just sometimes some of them are more Absolutely. stubborn than others and it has nothing to do with age that's my yeah, thought no I totally agree with you yes but it it took him a little bit because first he's not he like big on carrying things in his mouth I don't know why How he's big just not is he as a dog 
he's 50 pounds. He's, I thought they made this up when I adopted him at the rescue, but he's flat hair retriever and border collie and maybe something else. Oh, wow. Brilliant. He's very smart. And he's very sensitive. He's sometimes I get told he's scared of everything. I said he's not scared of everything. He's sensitive. If somebody right. bothers him enough, he will give him a little growl. But he's sensitive. Good he doesn't like to start trouble. He's just sensitive. That's Got what it. I thought. But it was kind of it was really cool. You know, it was I think more pleasant for him too because there was no tugging. Right. So that's a very nice part. And we found that in. You know, just four minutes a day increases all four measures of secure attachment. So it's if they'll just hold it for a few minutes in a walk, it's making a difference for them. Fantastic information. Something I forgot to say. <laughs> and again, thank you so much for um, the book and My the pleasure. samples. And thanks for coming on the show. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. I'd like to thank my tester. In this case, it was Mr. Z or Zeus. I like to call him Mr. Z. He likes that better. He told me. And he tested out the wee leash. And it was, I don't know. I think he, he really liked it. He felt more like like a special dog. Like it reminded me of those regal horses that hold their heads up high. You know, he kind of felt more regal with the wee leash. And it was a lot of fun to test it out. And the book, Love is All You Need by Jennifer Arnold is amazing. It's such a unique approach to our dogs, and it's definitely a great read. And as always, you can find out more on Best Bets for Pets. Go to the Best Bets for Pets tab for the show, and there'll be a picture of the book and a link to the website. And I'd like to thank my producer, Mark Winner, for making me and my guests sound great. He makes a, something that sounds so good. You have no idea how hard it is to make us all sound so good. And he does such a great job of it. So big pause up for Mark Winner. And thanks to everyone listening. I appreciate it so much. Keep listening. We have so many cool new products coming up. Let's Talk Pets. Every week on demand. Only on PetLifeRadio.com.